just not going to stop, are you? No, we're not going to do that. We're going to go to the bitter end, look at it all, though. Fun things to watch, all the entertainment out there to watch. Doesn't matter that it's going to go nowhere or nothing's going to happen with anything, partly because it's outside of our reach, but we're not going to turn inside, but we'd rather look outside and find all the uh, entertainment going on than to turn inside to what we've got to do locally in order to start to bring things back into some sanity, if nothing else. Uh, this is BTW RLM331, for those of you on aftercasts, wherever they're found, and hopefully into the future. Ho hopefully there's going to be a compilation of things. I uh, haven't been able to get working on the one I should be doing for myself, but uh, maybe in the future some people will figure out what I've been saying, how to approach these things and how to work through them. Uh, even though the progress is very slow, there is a, a progress, and not progressive, but progress back. If you go back to the past, and we'll be going into the future, uh, again, not to not to uh, throw out all the stuff that may have been good, that has never been done in history that I can tell, looking back through history, notwithstanding all the nastiness that's back there, and how we have how we got here, where today we look at the caucusocracies running everything, and that was, again, a bunch of good people not stopping it. And so I don't know why anybody can think that they can get away with doing nothing when the proof today is that the worst rises to the top, takes advantage, and exploits the condition, a condition. Uh, I've been asking us to look back at some of the things that were objective basis that we can work with, bring those together, rely on those because they can't be attacked, and then move out from there again. And in the process, not put ourselves in so much jeopardy as I've seen in the past. So, I don't know what else more to say. I, if everyone understood what I just said there, that would... Uh, should get us on the on the path, and, and I don't uh, do this often enough, but I want to thank Grammy Mary for donating and operating this, allowing the Spreaker to operate. That becomes one of the places that we go out of and go to. And after the post, after I do the broadcast, I go through the Spreaker and uh, and disseminate disseminate the file out from there. So, and as we've been having some some technical difficulties, if those of you that download the file would give me a couple hours, I can put up a good file. Whether or not there's breaks or not, I can fix all that. I can fix the timing problems. I can do clean up the sound a bit. I'm not real happy with my sound, but it's what I have. So that's where this goes. And then you can pick up the speaker file, or you can pick it up over at YouTube or wherever you all do. And then it goes off from there. People then pick it up and bring it off for the RLM. Just go right to RLM, and you'll have a file there in the archive there. That hopefully is long there, and then the links wherever they go. We got. Uh, we're, I'm in lots of places, I suppose. Uh, they can tune in and iHeart and, and I don't even know now uh, where where all it goes. But I appreciate all y'all doing the rebroadcasts or the repostings. It helps to get the, the word out. A few people hopefully will get the message of what I've been saying, utilizing the so-called news we get day to day or week to week uh, to give us insights of certain things on how we really can, well, we need to rethink what we're into, stop living in our fantasy worlds, Stop Stop trying to avoid the, the reality of the problem, the oppression, and, bring, and try to fabricate fantasy worlds in our mind that we think are going to come on without any more input than, than thinking about it. All that's not working. It's not hasn't worked, ever worked, and it's not going to work now. So, And people that are taking advantage, know to take advantage of that. They figured all this stuff out. In fact, I was talking to one of my colleagues. That we're not telling anybody anything new that we've been talking about for over 10 years. And people are still coming around to figuring out what we've been saying is how things are working, and the subversions are very easy to find, and they're very easy to deal with. The problem is, the way the condition is, is you have to deal with it. You can't just put your head back in the sand or think that by not doing something you're going to be doing anything. I mean, it just there's, it just doesn't work that way. And I wish it, it wasn't this way, but that's that's not a reality, and so I've had to deal with reality. Why? Because they, they come after people, and they, they come after me, and over a year, decades now, I've had to deal, figure out how to deal with all that and at least put up a neutrality, a point where they decide not to mess with you too much, if any, at all. And I think we're doing real good at that. And then the point was, okay, now that's not good enough. We have to turn it around so that this insanity doesn't overwhelm us. It, it's um, overwhelming at some point, but it's not, not only because we don't, uh, each one of us take a little piece of it. And I get to the point sometimes it's just so much going on, I just don't know where to 
where do you go? I mean, what do you do? I mean, there's just so much to be done. And that means that you step back and you step back and you refine what you do and you focus in on certain things. And at that, and to that end, you're not, I'm not as uh, comprehensively aware, if you will. I'm very aware, but I mean, as far as action, taking action, experience, that experience now gets funneled down to certain things, not not knowing about lots of things and doing nothing about it, even though we see it. But uh, I've been telling you that the way this place has been set up, it's been, ref been ex things have been extracted from us, and we've allowed the extractions. We've allowed a group of people to come in and uh, take advantage of us. And quite a d number of levels of things have happened, and so it's hard to really speak on any one. But generally, they all go in the same direction, and it's really just to subvert you. Uh, take advantage of you, no matter how much you think they're not, and how much you think you're you're going to compromise with it. They're taking advantage anyway. A anyway, so this this little re report came up just breaking into the broadcast. I thought it was fascinating. Uh, again, giving us a little bit of indication of what I'm saying about how we approach this, and and this is more in the more technical, formal thing like courts. But uh, I'll tell you that this rule uh, does work throughout the layers of who might ever come against you uh, in any kind of capacity. And I've told you one of the things that's remaining yet, and I think is going to be for a while, until they get rid of all property and the concept of all rights, is once they get rid of property or the idea of it, they don't have to give you due process. As long as there's a property to identify, they're going to have to provide the due process, at least in the United States of America wherever the so-called rule of law is, okay? That, that's where that's probably going to stay for a while. And I think that's about the only remaining thing we have. In other words, opportunity, notice opportunity, time, and place is what we have as due process and the things that make that adequate or sufficient. So here's a case that came through. Do we get the decision on this, on how this it works? There's still something notwithstanding the oppression that, that even the occupier recognizes. It doesn't come immediately, though, which is another problem. So understand this this issue uh, on what I'm going to say here. And this is relative uh, through the Iranians and the build a building they had in New York that some people sued Iran over the 911 thing and violations of sanctions against Iran to steal a building in Manhattan, I think it was. And the judge in the district court, which is supposed to be your first, that's the decision of the court. That's supposed to be the law in this country. And I'm not going to talk about the inadequacies of jurisdiction and all that. I talked about it before. You can do the research. In fact, that point came up again when dealing with talking with my colleagues over how we work through some problems uh, relative to these issues. But I'm not talking about the incompetency of the USDC courts. I'm talking about just the fact of what people will believe and what's coming out to reference the fact of this thing I keep telling you is maybe the, the, the last vestige of your rights actually in practice is what they call due process. And that's why we get back and I say make a record, because that's, that record is what starts to come through if you're going to press what the, the, the limits of what's required for due process. On Friday, the second, uh, second U.S. Court of Appeals, Circuit Court of Appeals in Manhattan ruled 3-0, Three zero that there was a quote troubling pattern of errors relatively uh, on a relatively straightforward issues in a case in this case where they had literally taken this building from uh, an organization that was actually ends up being a religious organization and I want and so I'm, I'm talking in two capacities here listen to what that the re, that due process is important and also then listen to a status and I don't I want to tread real lightly here because a lot of people take this and run the wrong direction or run overboard with it. But this, there's a, there's an insight. Remember I talked about creating statuses and statuses that protect you. This doesn't happen overnight. This ha happens over a long study and a proper application. But we're going to hear something at the very end of this. It's going to, for those of you that are listening very carefully and taking things slowly and methodically, you'll hear about another status here. You'll hear it in the fact of the lack of prior precedent to do what they did here. The, 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 there's a minimal precedent. And so what I told you, look at the anomalies uh, that you're facing in this occupied land, and you'll find ways to go through, or at least put up those as, a, as an obstruction, 
Remember, I talked a little bit, and this is not, uh, but I won't say that because it'll confuse people. There's, again, I've talked about how you get inside an authority, a jurisdiction that's prevailing, and you look for these things that make you at least amenable to the power. And if you don't, you end up uh, violating. Because the power, the real power, the one that can come and hurt you, is what you have to contend with. And I'm not saying compromise. I'm saying this is, you have to choose a direction that get, gives you the least jeopardy, if there's any to be had. Hopefully you find one where there's not going to be a jeopardy, and that's what your first so-called defense is. But on the... Uh, this is a troubling pattern of errors relative, and it's relatively straightforward issues. I also want you to listen about like the Bundy thing, where these judges, uh, there should be straightforward things going on, and they're not. And that's the first clue that we, we, we have trouble. Uh, but now I don't want to go that far over. I just want to talk about, here's a case that talks about things have to go through in a certain way before we can steal property, is what he, this court says. But getting to an outcome, the court, uh, Judge uh, Richard Wesley said, getting to an, any outcome requires a fair and procedurally adequate process, something that has been lacking in this case. There are no short cart, court, courts, and I'll get it right, there are no shortcuts in the rule of law. So here we have a, an evidence that the three uh, judges in a circuit uh, court of appeals capacity is very diligently applying the, the requirements of due process apply. And the, 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 you'll hear right here that there are fair, these processes have to be fair and procedurally adequate. Now, that's in the judicial side. There's also the same application in the administrative side. And so you, if you, here's two points here. If you can identify an unfairness, and that may be a little bit tough, but it can be found in a process, now, process is all the service of the paperwork and stuff, such. Right? So, you understand that, too. The, the process is this paperwork. This is like the administration of the case itself. And that those procedures are adequate. You go look at those two. You go research what constitutes fair and adequate. And now you start applying those rules, because those are what the courts, when you finally get the power against you and you're going to go defend yourself, this is how they're going to analyze this. And you make a record, hopefully your record's made, where, where you don't have, where they didn't have a right, you show that it was neither fair if you can, nor, nor procedurally adequate. And more importantly, that what I like to do is identify they could not even apply fair or adequate, because there should have been no process. In other words, they were precluded from interfering. And so you stack these up, you start learning how to stack these up, uh, maybe the last thing we have is this due process thing. And here it is again, comes back on a really important case politically. The United States wants to destroy Iran. They went and the government, DOJ went to go steal their properties in uh, Manhattan. And uh, they got their judgment from a judge. You can think pretty clearly, this was a judge that actually came out at the beginning that actually made a good decision on some other case. I had a little bit of hope, but uh, I think she got beat down pretty quick. I think that first good decision called attention to her, and so they got to her. And this was a subsequent decision on this case. So, their fair and procedurally adequate process has to happen. And when we go on the story here a little bit more, the decision is considered a defeat to the United States Department of Justice. Okay, the DOJ. They're supposed to be doing what? They're supposed to be doing justice. And we have another evidence that they won't. So don't walk into these things thinking you're getting justice. I don't care at any level. We're talking federal here, but at any level, folks. So you, you have to be ahead of this, way ahead of this. But the decision is considered a defeat for the U.S. Department of Justice as the government had hoped to sell the building for nearly $1 billion in satisfying the suit that the government brought for these people that were harmed in 911, which you have to think about that. That's another theft. Because that money's going on the, on the backs of the people that got harmed doesn't necessarily mean they're going to get much. Also in 2014, so how long, how long these cases go, United States District Judge, USDC, that's the incompetent court there, but notwithstanding that problem already, the U.S. The District Judge, uh, Catherine Forrest, granted authority to federal prosecutors to confiscate the building. However, an appeals court reversed that ruling in 2016. And so you see that the basic fundamentals of the courts are corrupt. 
There's no law. And, and, and a lot of people are saying, yeah, we know that. Well, that's not my point. My point is that's the re your reality. And this is translates all the way locally to you. It's here at the federal level, uh, back east, uh, for those of us that are not west, but uh, this goes back, this goes all the way down to you. This is the same example that everybody follows to, to violate people. And no good people are stepping up in the right ways to uh, expose it and then, uh, and then out it and then bring accountability. And this uh, goes on, this story goes on to talk us about this uh, this nonprofit organization that was established in 1978, far before anything happened in the politics of 9-11, far before this uh, politics that we hear going on today. The nonprofit organization had been working in advance of Islamic and Persian culture. And I've told you, sit inside international law and look for the seven or eight whatever things there are that are immune. And I will tell you, like I told you, make the Russian nested dolls, if you will, if that's the idea you have to nest your, your she, your statuses. This is one of the international culture and establishment of organizations for it are one of the, one of the protected interests. So underlying this whole thing is an international law provision. But the court said what, what was done in this case, and the way this case was, required a whole lot more than what, what was advanced through it to give the government the ability to steal it. The assets of a lobby foundation include the buildings of Manhattan, as well as Islamic centers consisting of schools and mosques in New York, Maryland, California, Texas, and Virginia. That tells me this was a pretty planned out attack by someone who made the suit. Anyway, the more important part, you keep reading down through how, they're gonna, how they do all this, American scholars say, and here's the big deal right here for me, notwithstanding it was an international provision of a foundation that promoted culture, one of, I think, seven or eight uh, immunities under international law. For those of you listening, you now consider what I've been saying about how to position yourself in a status and what you do and how you go through and how you go about doing that is never, I tell you that, but you're going to figure that out if you're listening. But the legal scholars here in this country say that, uh, that they know of only a few cases in history in which law enforcement authorities have seized a house of worship. That's another uh, immunity. And so you can well look in this, uh, in this case, the fundamental courts, uh, the basic courts of the federal courts are corrupt, absolutely. On, on This is really a slap in the face on the most fundamental things. This is... Uh, beyond a question here that they did not provide due process so we can, can't walk into these jurisdictions and expect due process. What I say is you make that or you show that they didn't provide it. What, on the two standards? Well, are they fair, what they provided? Uh, and or was it procedurally adequate? Fair might not, even though the statute might say it, you got two points. A statute may provide what fair might be, but that could be inadequate. You can argue that. A little bit diff more difficult, but you can do it. On the other hand, this is what I tell you about the objective basis. You look at what the rules are for the government in the statutes. That's the rules they have to follow. These are these people in the, in the government. Not the government itself. It's the people in government have to follow these things. And when they are in it, they fail to follow it. It's facially inadequate, facially unfair. And that's how you start attacking a lot of this. That isn't even, you've got some other things that come in administratively on the handling of things. Even on the judicial side, you have an administrative part of the judicial, not administrative law. It's just the administration of the case. Within that, there's duties. And so when, instead of talking out of your head and your, your opinions and your ideas and constitutional rights and all this other stuff, you bring up what standards are being applied to you and you, uh, and you meet those. And you show how the system itself won't or can't. I like the can't because that's like the patent stuff. When you get a statute that says the judicial, there's no judicial power that can extend to interfere with it. And then you look at the procedure, the administrative side where the authority of the hearings officer can't rise up enough to interfere. You have a place that the government can't. And when they do, that's that felony stuff I talked to you about. Anyway, this, if you work this through, Here's an evidence a due process is still valid, 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 and there's a standard for it, and the lower court didn't do it, and these people were sitting inside some protected places, I will say, that's not mentioned in this article, that I think you all who are trying to figure out how to 
relief, uh, relieve yourself from some of these oppressions, are going, should look into this case and start to think about what I've said here and start to researching and you'll see a little bit more, a little bit more. In a way, the patent grant is the same type of a, I, I can't say immunity, it's supposed to be. It's not really an immunity, but it's also not, not an immunity. It's an interesting thing. It's a, it's a, preve it's a preclusion against government interference literally against all the whole world, and that's kind of working in the same vein. It becomes a domestic uh, domestic immunity, if you will, a domestic preclusion. And so I can point to that because I can also point to black and white, and my, my opinion, black and white ex fulfillment of everything you know that's in the constitutions that are supposed to be followed. Now, that they're there doesn't mean they will be, and that's another problem. But I'm just trying to point out to you all, you got to get your head and mind wrapped around how they have figured us out and then refigure that to counter it. And if you don't, you're just going to live in your in your fantasy for it. You're just going to be a, a compromising to whatever you think you need to do. You'll be talking big and bad about your Second Amendment, uh, and it won't be. It means nothing. They still take you down. You're still paying your taxes that you don't really need to. If you look at it from what I see, the black and white says you're still subject to the, what you what they t they put on you. You're still underneath the fact that you can go down the road and no one recognizes your right to do that. Not because you have the right to drive. No, you have the right of ingress and egress attached to your property, and they don't have the right to impose a guilt upon you. They're supposed to presume you innocent, and you haven't stopped and said, hey, they've gone in, they've encroached upon that. I'm not even safe, no matter who I am, anywhere, because I never noticed that they were coming up and I haven't stopped it. And when you don't stop that kind of a criminal activity, it continues. And I look up real quick uh, in chat, RLM chat, legal scholars, sounds like an oxymoron to me. Well, if you, got, if you understand this concept, legal is not law, and they have different authorities, then a so-called scholar Someone who studies legal, legalisms, you, I can give them the knowledge of that. But you understand you have to put it there. That they have, and I would listen to this, uh, this view. It doesn't mean that I would agree with it, or it may not apply. Uh, again, legal and law could be separate. As I say, the, the law is in the land, the, the patent stuff. They, they didn't say a law scholar. So <laughs> they didn't talk about the land a so-called scholar, someone we would, a scholar being someone who is studied, very, very deeply studied in a lot of this, and can, you know, give us the full comprehensive uh, uh, understanding of how it uh, is, what it is, the history, the, the potential applications, how it was supposed to be. In legalism, you can have someone who can do that. That's what attorneys do on one level. The problem is that there are torners in that level. They're not really lawyers, they're not doing law. They're doing legal, and so we can have. I don't have a problem with some of these terms, if, if, uh, but what I've done and it makes it easier for me is I just put. If you want to be a legal scholar, fine. Put it in a category. It's not a law scholar, and it wouldn't be anything that we're talking about. It's not a, in particular. What I can see here in underlying this case is interna an international law scholar, and that'd be an interesting one because there's no law in international law. What is it? It's customs, habits, policies, agreements of nations the organism, the organ that represents the people within it by whatever right or wrong. And, and again, so I'm not trying to qualify any of this. I'm just saying there within a certain structure, I'm finding you have to process things the way the structure is going to handle it. And if you don't, you'll be run down or ignored. And if you have the way, the way you do, uh, where you do communicate and they trespass what they ought not, then you then you have the, at least a better record that says, like this case, you didn't procedurally do what you fair. It wasn't fair or procedurally adequate when you went and stole some some property from someone that may not have even been involved with this situation and or may not have been amenable to that kind of a, an attachment, lean uh, servitude. And so you don't speak in this regard, you don't get the protection. And this is my problem, like with the attorneys within the law, law, law uh, la, uh, the mining law, or things like that, the disposals. They speak in legal. They don't speak in the law. They speak the, in the concept that everything's regulable, and that's not true. And you can, as I've pointed out to many people over, I mean, I've done broadcasts on it. Like, let's say, the, go back to the rules, the BLM, the public land. What's their rules for a plan of operations? If you look right on black and white, even the way Reagan told us we needed to be spoken to in questions and answers that they give you, it says that the property, the scope of the law doesn't fit the property of all, mi of all mining instruments. 
It only fits a limited scope and then on a particular mineral if you look at the purpose. And so why not use just the black and white to show these regulations are not possible? Then I come along and tell you why they could not extend beyond that. If, if no one else knew. I mean, I just put my, what I know is what I've done, and I don't hear much around people talking about this, so I'll say that I'm the originator of what I tell you here. And I have been for 10 years, or longer. There's a way, why? It's the why. Like I said before, why is it the judicial power extended by a legislature to the judiciary to interfere with patents? Why? I've told you why. Why doesn't the contested case hearing officer rise up enough to interfere? I've told you why. It's not just that it doesn't, there's a reason. And when you understand the reason, it's even more powerful because now you understand what you're doing there is you're protecting yourself against encroachments, people that might come with what sounds like plausible excuses to interfere with you. And those are felonies. If you understand, again, as I've been talking for years on how to develop that. So anyway, this is a, to me, this came up just at the, like before I was break, uh, breaking under the broadcast, this story uh, here, this report, uh, the... Yeah, very important to understand those principles that are being told to you that are, those of you that are listening carefully and you want to start to extract yourself, you can take different uh, avenues. And I'm, I'm hesitant to explain any of this because people have tried it in the past and when they got a little overzealous over to what it, the things were actually supposed to do, they got themselves in a little bit of trouble. And I'd really have a hesitation to hand you a loaded gun on some of this stuff. You really have to do the lessons, the reading, the structure. Don't tell yourself stories. You can't come in with your mind and your thought. You have to re-educate yourself to what really is going on, and you'll find the narrow path. I, do, I can only say that because I think I've found it. I've found quite a few of them. And right now, because the caucusocracy is so bad, we have a really serious problem in this country in the in getting those recognized up front. Like this case tells us, if you look right at this one story, this case tells us where the federal court district courts are supposed to be the law determined. You see they make errors continuously and repeatedly. It is not a legal system that any of us trust. And we all know this inherently. We know this, the people that I'm speaking to the choir to understand this. What I'm saying is we still need the remedy. We're still being oppressed, notwithstanding that. So what's the answer around that puzzle? Right, so there's a little more discussion that has to be had. I've not been able to talk with many, if anybody, about this next stage until I get, can get people to recognize what's in this point and start to get practiced and experienced in it. I don't know really more to go. Uh, it's not so easy at that point because again, you've got to be uh, you got to be an educated mass of people, not not an opinionated mass. And so here's another, okay, so that was a one little interesting status as condition, I thought. And then another one came up earlier within another, these are within stories, I found was very interesting. This is a, an offshoot type thing. Some people are involved with it. Some people don't know, know about it. It's about an IRS. What is the IRS doing? How are they going along to make it easier for them to what? Uh, well, tax and theft, people will say. No, no, it's extortion, uh, unless you didn't do what you needed to do in, in order to what? In order to avoid that. And I've asked you to look at the due process of that. Remember, there was, due, there was a process that was supposed to be fair and procedurally adequate. Is What that court case said is still recognized by the occupiers, even the rule of law. And so that's the process you go look, and they will tell you that within the rules that their process is presumptively, this is the deference problem, a presumptively fair, unless you can show it wasn't. And if you start doing and thinking about what I say relative to the things that they have jurisdiction over and you're not, and you can show it, you can show that there is no rule that can be fairly applied. So you got rid of that right off the bat. And if there's no rule that can be fairly applied, if there's no procedure that can be fairly applied, then how can any be procedurally adequate? You've got that one. And this is not, that's just me talking. You have to develop this as not an opinion, not as a statement, but in the facts. In the facts. And then in the black and white, hopefully. And this is the only way I can understand how to, uh, how to start to reapproach this. And as I've been doing this myself and with others, we start to push back and we start to be let alone, if nothing else. If nothing else. And so here's another story about the IRS and what they're doing to make it more efficient to come after you. 
And all of you all that don't understand uh, uh, what's going on, and but will complain about it, don't don't go and then go listen to people that got beat down by the system when it was clear they did it wrong themselves, and they didn't even apply this uh, this this simple due process problem that the rules even say. So this is the other problem: the rules provide due process that no one asks for, or demands, I guess, is a better term when they're denied, or make a record of the denial, which on its face then becomes procedurally unfair, doesn't it? This is really all I've been talking about. All this, all this time to show you how you quickly show how what the what's coming against you in this world has no bear has no bearing on you and has no cause to be on you and has no authority and jurisdiction. All these were bigger words that we start talking about. But there's another thing that they do within the records, which you may or may not be uh, understanding about. That may or may not come to term, but that when you catch on, gives the system a problem. But I can tell you that they attempt to make it sound like you're frivolous, and then you have to show how you're not. But uh, and, and this is the this is what I'm saying. There's a, a proof that needs to be made within the construct of the black and white. And as I say, I'm saying I'm hearing a bunch of people say, "I don't want to do this. This is too much work." Yeah, well, this is the occupation you live under. This is what they've done to us, and we were required to keep free from it, and we didn't. And I don't know what to say about that. It's not me. It's not a judgment. It's just a condition. Yeah, so this, this uh, what is it, this uh, IRS, what's even the title? The IRS doesn't have an R&D shop, so it built a $7 million procurement vehicle instead. And after I read the story, I don't understand what the hell they're talking about, but it doesn't matter. I got down to the point where there was a little tidbit of information. And I've got to go tread light. All this stuff has to be tread lightly on. Uh, we do this. In fact, we avoid this big time uh, because of what it does in status. But you got to be careful on how you apply it, because then what they do is they throw you, they try to throw you out as being frivolous, and so you have to have the what the what the domestic mail manual policy. You have to have that available and show them how they're wrong. So it's a double step problem. At least it has been every time we've addressed it. And this uh, interesting little story about how, about the IRS pops up within this story about how they're going to go through and make it more efficient to uh, rip people off or can not disclose to them that, that it's not actually they're the person liable and not disclose that they haven't given them the due process and all the things I see that are sitting right there to be done. Uh, the, uh, the conversation starts here. For the agency's contracting officers, uh, there's a log jam of tasks, and they re are trying to make more efficient this flow-through, if you will, as the requests for doing certain things go through the system that they're trying now to upgrade. Uh, again, the procurement of how they get things done. At the same time, contracting officers are being asked to double-check old and ongoing requests to make changes where needed as they adjust the system or whatever their policies might be. The quote, so we are constantly trying to find ways to be more efficient to support our customers and to be more transparent about what we do. Now, why would they be more transparent if they came from a place they should be transparent? Should be a question, but let me go on just, I'm not focusing on these problems. Uh, the Smith said, and this is a Smith, uh, Agent Smith, a uh, shift from, quote, low-value work to high-value work uh, per the president's man management agenda. And so they wanted to make things more efficient, right? The management agenda. Uh, executive, right? So this is all part of the uh, administration of the federal government. Uh, one area, one area prime for that kind of automation is compliance with data reporting requirements. Data reporting requirements. Now, listen very carefully on how you learn to read some of this. This is a requirement that's coming up here in the next paragraph, which we might look past it. Some of you will have, when I get to the punchline, will have understood this, I think, in a, in a surface manner, that what you've been told about it. But there's a, actual rules behind the non-requirement of what they end up saying is required by the IRS. And that is the things you have to start looking for, because what's not required by the IRS, and but what is required by the IRS but not required by you, may be how you identify a trespass, a mischaracterization, a defamation, something that's not proper, unless you've given them some other information. So keep reading here on one uh, prime area, is, uh, particularly those mandated by the Data Accountability and Transparency Act, the Data Act. But, uh, these mnemonics are great. Anyway, the draft solicitation is looking for automation solutions having to do with any of and all aspects of reporting process, including finding the data, sorting it, 
in correcting area errors or obvious deficiencies. Now remember, I'm just these are recording requirements they're talking about. In other words, this is part and parcel to the authority that it wields and how it goes about uh, making records that identify things that are within its jurisdiction, IRS here, under management of the federal government. If you kind of pull these together, it should blow, should blow, blow your mind a little bit. But anyway, here we go. For example, out of the middle of nowhere comes this. You wouldn't think that this would be a big deal. Didn't Most people don't think about this at all. I happen to know it's a big deal, but not from the standpoint of standing on it like a uh, like a defensive shield. It's just one more element of how they go and destroy you, how they set a record against you, and if you don't know it and and make a cl clarify the record on there, they then take the assumption because uh, that's the way the requirements are that you are subject to it. And this is how you start to look around for these requirements everywhere. And you start connecting all these requirements for this particular thing up, and you'll start connecting up directly the commerce connection to the federal government in the utility of this particular piece of data. For example, the solicitation suggests vendors offer a solution for adding the four-digit routing number most people leave off the end of a zip code a low-level task that could easily be automated. Okay, I just said that. Doesn't sound like much, but what did they just say? Solicitation so vendors to the IRS offer a solution for adding the four-digit routing number. Most people leave off the end. Why do they, and a zip code, why do they need a routing number? I mean, when you think about routing in the terms of banking, because they're dealing in funds of the United States, isn't that an interesting correlation? But what about the zip code? What about that four-digit routing number? Is it required? They say it's required. Well, go look at the domestic mail manual. Go find it. Go read it. Go look at whether or not the zip code is required and upon whom or what and for what purpose. And you'll find a zip code for people there's no requirement to use it, let alone the plus four, which is used by the IRS as a routing number within their system. I'm pausing a little bit. I'm, oh, if you don't understand how they pull this off, when you start putting zip codes and zip plus fours on the relevant mail, what you're acknowledging, because to say something on a piece of mail could be mail fraud, that isn't true. You know, I've used that as well. I mean, as soon as it starts coming through that's mischaracterizing you for a felonious purpose, the intention to change your, your, your character, your status, then maybe you should uh, necessarily call that out, you think? Uh, I say yes, and we do. Uh, the four-digit number at the end of the zip is just not this designator to get mail. It's actually used for the purposes of taxes and vendor use for the purpose of taxation and the property of how they move and manage the taxation condition and system um, procurement uh, and other conditions within the, the federal government. It's strictly privatized to the federal government. All right, so you have zip code and then plus four. The plus four they use for routing. What about the zip code? Go read the domestic mail manual and you'll find out it's not required for people. It is required for commerce. And so when they put you in, the, when you use the zip, which is registered to the service, not the post office, but the service, then you, you start to understand how you start putting this together relative to what? That it's a, in the commerce principles, within the commerce and financial structure of the federal government, that you use a zip code. Because it's not required. You can use it. It helps them. But when it comes down to things that are status-oriented or official mail, um, legal mail in, in this case, or even lawful mail where you're asserting something that's, let's say your property doesn't have a zip code, does it? No, they'll assign one if you become a business, if that's how you want to go and you don't go in your inherent right to do things. They'll attach the federal business identifier registered to the service of the postal office, you know, the postal service at the post office. Now, this distinction of post office and post service has kind of been, I think, a big time diminished between the 90s and now. It's still there, but you have to know, again, they changed the manual. They keep moving the policy around. In fact, all the stuff I used to know, I had to go refine 
here recently when we were doing some things against the Postmaster General that created more crime and problems for uh, a mail handling. In the local postmaster and postmistress causing obstruction of the mail and making these demands that are not within the within the domestic mail manual, insisting that you have to have your name in all caps, insisting you have to use a zip code, insisting you have to use the plus four, and none of that is actually right. The capitalized letter relevant to bankruptcy law is incorrect as, uh, for sure. And relative to disposed land, it has to be wrong, and it's not a federal territory, and it doesn't not, re and it's not required. And when you when you see uh, like, well, I don't know if I want to go this far, uh, there's a certain uh, location that you put on the mail uh, that doesn't have a zip plus four, doesn't have a zip at all. So they can't make the requirement. Why? Because there's still a status in this country that doesn't rise to the level of being subject and recognized by this little article here. When zip plus four is a routing number relative to IRS cognizance. And so for those of us that, that we've heard, lots of people go make a big deal about, oh, you can't use a zip and this and that. Yeah, look at that. Look at it. It's right. But you have to have a little bit more in you explaining why you don't use it or that you don't have to. You don't even talk about why you don't use it. You just say you don't have to. And you pull out the DMM, the, 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 the domestic mail manual, number for that now. And it's been moved. I had to refine it. In fact, in fact, here's how they work this. They keep changing the policies, and they try to make it as vague and, and uh, as possible. In fact, I went and saw the new mail manual, and I said uh, they left out a provision that they were supposed to uh, uh, utilize and acknowledge for general delivery, and it was removed. And I looked at that. I said, they've made an error. They can't do that inside this policy. This policy change was wrong. I don't know what the, how the timing worked out, but it was, I think, a week later I went back to look, and they put it, it's like they're reading my mind, they put a subnote that this is going to be clarified and amended to reintroduce the thing they omitted requiring lo that location within the post office, the postal service. Okay, so how could I know that that was omitted, that it was required? Because if you look at the foundation for how things are supposed to work and the separations between what the... The men and women are supposed to be doing relative to the commerce side. They can't remove these things. They have to travel through the policy. And if they're not, they're a violation of the policy. That would be an unfair imposition by the policy. In fact, they, someone caught that. And that's why there's a different style of analysis you have to do. You can't even take what you're reading by these policy considerations as accurate. You have to have a knowledge deeper because they legally take you down. But lawfully, they can't. In the law, the absolute, there are restrictions on the government. They can't. And so this is, becomes a very important uh, condition, even though it's in a story about the IRS, that they made a point of something so menial as something so required and important to be done up between them and their vendors. It was very fascinating to me when, uh, for decades now, we've been having to fight to keep the status accurate because the inclusion of these things sucks you into a status that they can assume by what judicial notice of the of the notices you send out what your status is and how to treat you and every time they try to do that we put in a notice of defamation or mischaracterization or violent invalidation of fraud mail fraud breach of the uh, record uh, they shut up and can't do anything about it right so this is the they do not respond they cut caught and the thing can't move forward based on that premise. Okay, so what this is, I guess the point there is when you know this, and they, it, it's not in all cases, in all cases, if it's I'm talking to someone down the street and it's a friend, they're not going to do anything, they want to put a zip code, I don't care. But when it comes down to the legal mail, what they call the legal mail, where the, the statutes attach liability, it's going to be correct. And if it doesn't mean anything, I could care less. So there's this fluid little motion. It would be best to be vigilant against that always. But it becomes you become it becomes too much work at some level. At least for myself. I don't do everything that I communicate with the government that means enough that I have to worry about it every time. On those things that it will, on the records I'm going to move forward potentially into a court or into a hearing, 
you're definitely going to have a record of the correction and or the violation. So a lot of talking here. I don't know if I lost people. A little story here about the IRS and its procurements, and they say that the four-digit routing number that's on the end of the zip code's required. You have to ask why. If it's for the post office. It's because this thing is tied to a bigger system. And yet you look inside the system and the rules and you find there's exceptions. You should ask why about that. That's an interesting study as well. And so when you know all, you start to read and you know this inside. There's no question. It's not opinion. You know the requirements are supposed to be being met. For myself, I was able to see if policy changed, the new DMMs were changed. But wait a minute, they left out something. You have to be read enough to be able to do that. Uh, I don't like to tell you that, and I don't like that we have to, but this is how they're doing it to us. And when you can, you become a whole lot more formidable in how you're going to address it. And there's a whole lot less that gets around uh, past you when you're attempting to make a certain thing that the system doesn't want you to see. In the very minimum, you get to call them out for an excess of authority or a lack of authority under that color coming to defame you or mischaracterize you or set your property up for the takedown. That's a much better word in your mouth than obstinately saying that a rule don't apply uh, and therefore you're not going to move any further or whatever. You're going to make a demand. At least experience shows me that. And I think anybody who's been close enough to the system to have to deal with it knows that as well. Whether they want to ever agree with me or not is irrelevant. They see the problem. So here, simple little thing. Uh, the four-digit number on the outside of the zip code you thought was a simple routing number for the uh, to make your mail go quicker. No, the IRS uses that inside as a requirement for the IRS system for uh, their their collections, their ability to collect. And so it's not unimportant. It's, it's it's very important, and it means something. As well as you get back, the zip means something. But it's not yours. It's not just a number. It means something. Go find out what the rules say it means. Go find the exceptions. Go see if you fit in there. Make sure you operate within the exceptions, if there are. Don't extenuate outside of those exceptions, and perform your tasks through the exception and know they're there if they ever get challenged. If they become a question, you have the answer. You have it by rote. You, you have it by black and white. We don't walk on our opinions and my constitutional right to do this and that. It doesn't work that way. Yet, these rules will fulfill that if you know they're there and how to work them. And so I put maybe too much time on that. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. What's the zip code? Who cares? Well, go read about the zip code. It's pretty interesting. Very fascinating study. Very fascinating study. A zip plus four. What was that? They make it sound like you oh make your mail qu get there quicker. Then I read this little story years later if I didn't know anything more. Well, the IRS uses it as a routing number within the tax collection system. And there's another thing on top of this that does go international, which is fascinating, even more fascinating when you talk about rule of law. It's just amazing what they've done to us and we're oblivious to. And and yeah. I mean, what, what do I say? What do I say? I talk about everyone listens and says, think it's interesting and whatnot. And you'll go, okay, now I know the routing number not to use it. It's not about that. It's about understanding that it's there and what it does. And when you get into your dealings with the government on any level, that becomes this silent witness against you if it's not corrected. They don't like dealing with it in you. They'd say, well, that's all we can do. But when you pull out the black and white that says, yeah, but when you did that, you violated my property or my rights or my remedies, now they can't do it. They can try to put it forward, and you can accept it, or you can have why they can't. And that's how you respond to them. And then you attach, once they got why they can't, because it changes something in you that they have no right to do, and the fact of that becomes a felony on its own under color of the authority to do so. You also interfere with the underlying property and rights. Those are felonies as well. You don't have to get all angry on them. You just give them notice that if they continue, that's, the, that's what they're going to be held to account for. Black and white. What they're not supposed to be doing against. Given it's a, a, a prohibition against it. And so, I mean, I don't know what to say. It's not that hard. A uh, simple little paragraph in a story is instructive. Did anybody understand what I just said? I don't even know. Did you one ear out the other? I don't even know. But when you look and see that there are requirements from state to state and the federal government 
What have I told you before? The CIA, if we didn't look into any place else. World Factbook. CIA says the states are administrative divisions. Why wouldn't they use a, a zip plus four? They're all part of a business IRS takings thing system. Right? I mean, they're all part of, they're all vendors to the federal government. And when you look inside the tax laws of the state where they're not where they're not inappropriate, they stand as law. And when you see it from that perspective and you sign out what the word income is, it's defined in state law, not federal law. For all y'all that are trying to fight the federal system, it's not income. It's whatever source is derived. Well, where is that in your state? Your your state so called. It's defined under income in your state. But it's not everything. So I don't know what. So that's the that's what the routing system as a pertinent is atten, uh, attaches to. And if you're not doing any of that, you can't let it attach to you. And I hesitate to say how to address that because it's kind of like a fluid thing. But it's not. It doesn't become the focus of anything. It becomes a part of other. They'll be doing bigger things wrong, and you would just tag this problem of the a demand that they correct the record to reflect more properly your status, which and then you state it, which is like, let's say, a patentee without protected by the patent and or the limits of the law relative to any authority. And that the util utilization of that by the clerk or whomever is is an infringement unlawfully, without warrant, and felony in on multiple levels. I mean, I'm just paraphrasing some stuff that comes to mind if it happens, and that it has happened. I mean, that's how we speak. That's how I write letters. A simple little number. What does it mean? People don't even know. And it has legal consequences. And if you know right, it also has inconsequential in law, but that it's a trespass in law that you can then utilize. And I'll tell you, nobody knows this. Uh, you deal with the system, all they're doing is they take down what they're told to take because they're coming from inside their system and that's they think it's all correctly applied generally. So you're not you can't get into argument with these people. They, they go by their policy Bibles. Why the DMM relative to this point is important because it says there's an exception. My, my point, not just to know the exception, is why would that exception be if this is from all sources derived from all places? And those exceptions work on down as you keep studying. They all start connecting up at some level. And so, again, as I get to the point when you start finding it's all connected up on the law side, it's not really such a hard argument. There's no argument. It's just a, the identification of the corruption. And you can start nice and friendly on the beginning to explain that they made a corruption against you and how and why. And then, then if they don't want to persist, then you have to move a little more strongly. How else are you going to defend yourself? And what am I saying? You, that's the record that they have to fairly give you fair process for and procedures for uh, that ultimately become whether or not down the road that they have a right at all. And I'm adding on top of that the liability that if they didn't do that correctly, then they were also criminals. And there's not very much, they can't walk into court, if you will, in equity, because that's all the equity system is. This court system is equity. That's why I say you, they don't, you take away their right. How are they going to walk in with what they call dirty hands? Go look that up. They can't walk in with dirty hands. So you got, like I keep talking about the, these things, these obstructions. If you've got an administrative thing going, they can't go to court. If they've defamed you, they can't go to court. If they're violating you, you get to go to court as a, as a collateral action against their position. So why don't we take that route? Understand these things to this level and take that route when we're accosted instead of, uh, oh, I got my constitutional rights. And that's then we go down in flames and wonder why we don't have any constitutional rights. When the court today comes out and says, or yesterday, you know, this case is a relatively easy case and you applied no due process relative to that and you don't have a right to take their property that way. It, it, there it is. And part of we accept this mediocrity. We accept it. And so it keeps being fed to us. And I guess that's part of part of my problem with all this after I started to see this. We really have, as a society, we've just we've lowered the bar so low that the bar now is the rule of law. And even a monkey could do this. Uh, which brings up my next story. Scarier the heck. I told you folks, um, 
when they started to give, uh, they wanted to give EBT cards to monkeys, and they even had the question of the ethics about that, and then that they wanted to go scientifically manipulate monkeys to be human. They even considered that. We were on a fast downward spiral. I told you this years ago. It's really over at that point. Well, it's here, folks. I mean, this is, uh, I had a tab way back in the past, but something came up this week. I'm going to bring it up. It's really ethically scares me. It was a story months and months and months and months ago. The cautions and ur caution urged as scientists look to create human monkey chimeras. Chimeras? Very good. Chime in here, folks. The monkeys in Douglas Munoz King Kingston's lab look like other monkeys. They socialize and move around and eat, drink in the same way. They don't fall over or stagger around. In fact, the only thing separating the macaws from macaques, I guess it is. Yeah, the macaws are birds, aren't they? Fly away, be free. Oh, macaques are uh, from their uh, unaltered lab mates is the elevated level of specific human protein implanted inside their brains. Proteins that accumulate the brain in the brains of humans with Alzheimer's disease. Now, stop right there. I don't have to go through all this story. You can read this. The point is, this guy is doing this experiment, and he says it ethically scares him. He's a scientist. In fact, there has been no ethical study done on this at all. I told you when they even considered the conception of this idea, we were going to be in a fast uh, descending spiral, and this is a, going to be a thing. Well, folks, Spanish scientists create human monkey Chimera, Chimera in China. I guess it's Chimera in China, or is it Chimera in China? Uh, you, you be the judge. Researchers led by science, Spanish, you thought the Chinese were doing this, led by Spanish scientist Juan Carlos Izpizua, have created for the first time a human-monkey hybrid in a laboratory in China, an important step toward using animals for human organ transplant. The project collaborator, Australia uh, Nunes, uh, c uh, confirmed. So, it, they didn't even do ethical studies. They talked about doing ethical studies. They're scared, and they still push the cherry red button. You now have in the world a hybridized monkey, folks, that other, if you listen to their evolutionary theories, not adaption, but actual species evolution, no, no less. No support for none, any of it at all. But if you go down their track, they're willing to, to lessen themselves and bring them into into a state of what? A professed good. Uh, human organs. But are they really human organs? We have now, as I said, when they were thinking about this, that they would think about thinking about it, I said we were in a short time. Well, they're now making human hybrid monkeys. They're going to give a monkey an EBT card, folks. I don't care how you get around this. It's going to happen. And we found out the first thing that's going to happen, they're going to go down and get some bananas and go try to petition the first hooker they find. Okay? That's the report. We already got that report. But let's look at what the scientists are willing to do in diminishing man by thinking that we're starting from a monkey. Should scare you to death. Should scare you to death in the future. When you start seeing that you're not stopping this overarching oppression of mandating things, mandating, let's say, vaccines and, sh and, and injections that way, which we now know also epigenetically change us. You have to consider what this, the, the scariness, uh, the harm that has never, ever been subject to any scrutiny. They went right past this one, folks. Just like I told you they would. As soon as it went on the boards, it, because it's really the forward agenda, they have to diminish populations in order to control them. They have to stop things like France and the people rising up in the revolutions. They're going to come in to make, make your society less, and there's going to be some of the elites. But this is a, when you started to find out about epigenetic, epigenetic changing, Remember the, the, the dragonfly experiment. They had to epigenetically change that critter, uh, that insect, in order to accept the digital package they approached that then controlled it. Is that line of condition that's going on that they now met up now the monkey with man? They're saying. 
there, there's no there's no scrutiny scruples about this. They're just doing it. And anyway, I don't even know where to go. How it's not just scary. This, this is this is a crime. I would have to say this is a crime. Where do you end? Where is that line? All these things start to come in. Where is that line when you when you breached the organism, the genetics, the description of the organism? Where's the line of when it gets when you can say it has consciousness, when it has rights, when it's a capacity, when you pull it out and say, well, you, it's not. It has rights like you know the, they want to give a monkey an EBD card. What do you think about this one? Do you see the genetic problems that we have in gene, gene spicing right now? That the mutations come out real quick that make it something different they don't understand? They're re diminishing the capacity of man. They claim they're doing something good in trying to stop, stop Alzheimer's. They're not actually understanding what causes Alzheimer's. They're certainly not going to look at it and say maybe it's the pharmaceutical industry that's kind of got this thing set up on a downward spiral anyway. And don't ever forget, even notwithstanding they're doing it in China, Title 50 United States would said that they could do it here if all they have to do is say it's national security. They could actually spin this to say they wanted fighters in this, I can see already. So your sons and daughters won't die for the wars to protect our nation. But we already know that the police forces are not so smart. They already act like monkeys, don't we? So there's not going to be much transitional change here, is there? Our perception of, the, of who's doing this, you know, what is it, the, the planet of the apes? I mean, if the, science already said that man is an ape, they're already a planet of the apes. But the apes become in control because of mutations that are done by these Things that scare the scientists of today. Who cares? The, the strongest of the fittest then, right? We don't live in just interesting times. We're living in some pretty scary times, I suppose. And uh, when you see where, as I say, the military consequence of this, when you see that what government and people and corporations are willing to do for the next profit motive, when you see the partnershiping of all this, which is not new. I mean, they called it fascism back in the 40s when it was defined. It was the integration of government with corporations to control population. And, and we go on to control the, the production and all this other stuff, which means they have to protect... They have to control property, and that includes you. They don't. You're just that animal, aren't you? Then as well. This is bringing on, uh, continuing, more permanently, and in the future, the organisms that will be extended rights. Remember, now they've been trying to push that nature has rights. A river has rights. Don't underestimate what that's doing relative to a human monkey hybrid that scares the scientists that are doing it that never, ever thought of the ethical ramifications, one. And they're supposedly driven by science, uh, this, this quest for knowledge. They haven't understood themselves to begin with, anyway. But we're running again into this, uh, this condition of the military uh, condition of control and protecting itself, security to itself. Uh, that, you know, you see these swarms that are being made in the so-called AI-controlled uh, drones and this and that. You're looking at this condition expanding to uh, organisms, not just biological. I think they've figured out they have a limit on the on the the mechanical. I think they've known it all along. That's why they've been moving this other direction. But uh, just to point, continue to point out and to show uh, that people don't want to say. I, I say military. We're in a military consequence. I, I can't find a reason to say police. Yeah, I guess you can be in a police state. Yeah, I guess there could be a police action. But to me, the, underneath the laws, underneath the condition, underneath the necessities, it's not as powerful as saying there's a military over you and being able to prove it, which I have over and over again. That again, uh, a gentleman writes uh, certain uh, things to tell us that this is the fact. The overview of this, I, I don't disagree with, but it's the specifics I don't like. This guy also happens to be an attorney, and I find he always falls short of what he 
wants to call these things. He comes right up to uh, utilizing all the words of the military, but you only want to want to say it's policing. Policing what? You know, for for what it becomes a problem when it you know someone you sees them and Lieber Code says if it's a military, it's a military. You better call it out because if you call short. As I said before, if you don't know your rights, you don't understand what to assert, you don't know when you're being violated, you can't articulate that point, and it has no, it makes no matter. You can research all the kinds of stuff in the world, you can know everything in the world if you're going to sit there and do nothing with it. I guess is my, uh, I don't want to go there yet, uh, my problem with the current news about the the big deal news that hit in the last few days. But uh, anyway, what do you can do about it? Who cares? I mean, this is a foregone proof. Here we go. Let's back on this story. The tyranny of the police state disguised as law and order. It's not a police state, folks. It's a military state. It's disguised as law and order is the truth. But that is what on its t on the title of this is what it's a it's a felony to you. And my problem with that is I hear nobody actually stepping up to stop to uh, count that part out and expose it and move to stop it. And you all say, say what? Well, that's our problem. We're ignorant. Well, what good will it do? That's that's your problem. You're inactive. See, it's required action. Evolu and I say evolutionary engagement. You gotta. You want to have some evolutionary? Want to get out of the monkey mind? You're going to have to figure out how to evolve out of how we've been doing it in the past and work with what we got in reality. This is by John Whitehead. Called himself a United States Con U.S. constitutional attorney. Out of Charlottesville, Virginia, it says here. Uh, enough with the distractions. Enough with partisan jousting. Enough with the sniping and name-calling and mudslinging that do nothing to make this country safer or freer or more just. We have let we have let the government's evil doing its evil doing its abuses, power grabs, brutality, meaning meanness, humanity, immorality, creed, corruption, debauchery, and debauchery. Is that the ka or cha? They're China or China? Yeah, interesting. And tyranny uh, go on way for for law too long. We're approaching a reckoning, folks. We're at the reckoning. We're not approaching the reckoning. We're done. And we're going to have to stand up in a way that doesn't allow us to be taken down completely. This was stated as this is the point as he writes here as the poet W. B. Yeats warned: when things fall apart and our and our anarchy is loosed upon the world. And I can hear all the anarchists saying, yeah, that's what we want to hear. And I've, I've shown you, uh, when you start looking at language and what, how we, we communicate with each other, the lack of a state means communism. That's technically what it is. The lack of a state means communism. So go ahead and continue uh, stating you want to be a stateless anarchist. But you've denied your own existence being a state, uh, first of all. You're an organization of organs. That's how they organize, right? That's these words are all there to tell us. We're we're at we're at beyond I guess the point that we should have noticed and this attorney continues talking like it's coming is my main problem he doesn't understand we're in a military problem otherwise I wouldn't tell you about Title 50 because it wouldn't work and we just heard last week the government is turning its Southcom dirigibles to surveil you in the north of South Dakota in the South Dakota yeah the north of South Dakota would be the farthest reaches of South Dakota why because the reckoning has happened. We're, we fail. We better. We got to pull ourselves back out. We got to really lean hard on the ship of state's tiller, otherwise it's going to drive us into the very things he does describe here, which is accurate enough. But you don't need to be told that by this guy. I don't even. Again, I don't think this guy's a bad guy. I just think I don't know why people just don't want to call out what they need to call out. And and all that he says there in the beginning. He doesn't start to explain anything on how we're going to come back. He talks about all the phrases like goose-stepping dep depotism and authoritarian tendencies. And, I mean tendencies. That's, the government is just one big force. And it's not even government. It's the other thing. It's people inside it. When you write your letter, you're not talking to a government. You're talking to someone who's doing something wrong usually, unless you're a criminal. And how do we know that happened unless we go to an objective basis we've all kind of agreed within the system called the state that that, that action would be a, a, accountable for the, what it does, a wrongful, what a wrongful action is. If there's accountability what that accountability is. That's due process too. You, you're denying all this stuff when you start going into these ideas that uh, either you don't want to assert and defend yourself 
uh, for, for, to agree with, or to not protect yourself against them. So he goes on and on and talks about all this stuff. Sounds great. Goes through all, goes on and on and on about it. where the history about all this is, uh, going through the government and the president, so called, and all this stuff going on. And uh, yet, no matter what he says, no matter how we might differ about how success or failure of the past presidential administration, surely we can agree that the president should not be empowered to act as an imperial dictator with permanent powers. Why is that even a question? That's not even a question. This is not we. This is each one of us. And he goes on to talk about the atrocities of the courts allowing cops to shoot people. A family dog, and he shoots someone else instead. He shoots not the dog, he shoots the 10-year-old. Folks, when you see that, what government are you living under? It's not reckoning or it's happened. This is not something just to just continue discussing ad nauseum. This is something to notice and then figure out what you're going to do about it. When you live in a country where the cops can shoot a 10-year-old, to shoot a dog that a dog catcher can catch without even using a gun, where are you? Where do you think you live? When a court system of judges, bar association members allows that, who do you think is in control? And we're not even talking about the political controls that you know are running rampant this week in the news. The elephant in the room. So this article goes on and talks about a police state. He's got a book to promote to you. And not one time will he say it's a military. He'll say it looks like the military. He'll tell you that it, all these things might be, he uses the terms of military uh, uh, tactics. He'll never tell you we're already in the military consequence, and he has never offered, and I, I put this on him because he's supposed to be the, well, he's the legal scholar here. He's supposedly the constitutional co scholar. He does not explain even the beginnings of how you would approach removing this condition, which is not going to be done tomorrow by any one of us, maybe not even a hundred of us. And it's not going to be done by force. So, where is the advice from someone who's been learned in the system uh, to do the do the things that we need to do, and never explaining it's already gone over? He actually makes the role of the military as an external thing. In other words, he does talk about this in a paragraph. No matter how we might differ about the role of the United States military in foreign affairs, surely we can agree the United States, America's war spending and commitment to policing the rest of the world is bankrupting the nation and spreading our troops dangerously thin. Well, that's a violation of some constitutional pr principles, but he's, he says uh, right there, policing. See, war is policing. So it's like he's not really telling you the truth of something he may actually know. And because I think if he did that, he'd have to actually get on the, do what I do behind the woodshed and try to offer you things that how you're going to stay inside of, be living in a military consequence, a military oppression, and how you still function, living in an open air prison and still function. That's a tough thing. And yet, we still have to do it. They talk about going to space is hard. Yeah, no, this is much, much more difficult. Much more difficult. And in the future, you're going to be doing with monkeys coming after you. They're wired up uh, through the 5G, and they're going to be doing, the, they'll be doing whatever enforcement they want to do. And they won't listen to you. They won't even listen to the things that I'm telling you you should have been doing. In fact, they'll cause that whole point because you didn't respond like I, like I tell minors to do. When you get that first letter notice, you better respond. They don't do that. When you don't do that, you're done. It's going to go almost automatic. When they diminish the capacity of the society, they have you. And they've got us diminished. There is no reckoning. It's already happened. It's turned. The ship has turned. It's on a new course. Or so, I mean, if you want to put it in admiralty terms or military terms, you've got to, this is the time to mutiny on the turn. And it's still not too late before the minions of Chimera 
come upon you, whether that's actually an organism or it's an AI-driven organism. At the beck and call of whomever behind the scenes with this funny switch and a big smile on their face. You know, so-called elites that have are above the law, that actually run the switches behind this thing. I don't get understand how why that's even. I don't understand why there's so many questions. Why we continue looking for evidence? Why, when you see that there's no accountability, we look for any connections? Like we're talking about here. I guess I'll talk about it now. Did any the monkeys that are out in the world that are enforced law enforcement? Proven by the Supreme Court to be too smart to be a cop, a law enforcement, too psychologically stable. That look out and don't see a harm unless it's to them. They're not like a social justice warrior uh, with a uniform is all I can see. But they have a mission. Oh, another example. They're, they're, they're told what to do and they're compliant with that, that without question. Even though there's an oath that they take that I understand that's taken to say that they need to stand against any lawless order, they don't have a basis to actually make that decision without getting in trouble. That should have been a motivation to say, whoa, wait, we got a, we got a little bit of a problem. But these unaccountable so-called elites, the people in decisions of, deci seats of decision, all have their, their questions. And I think that's the, well, we call it blackmail. That's what they use to exploit. We're seeing the, the cockistocracy rising up and exposed in, in, in all these conditions where a mediocre, mentally midgeted population looks at stories that they're being told in the world makes a big deal about things that they should be looking back and say, well, this has been with us a long time. This is not an exception. This is the rule that should not be, and we're allowing it. We need to stop it. We need to do everything in our power to stop it. And you watch the system as it protects itself. Again, security to the system is the military approach. You, you notice it by that. When it secures itself from accountability, it's a military operation. They don't, they don't have to be wearing soldiers. You don't have to have a. They don't have to have a uniform. Well, a suit could be a uniform here. The spaghetti western will keep it secret to you. It'll come to you in any form you'll accept, and that's no different than alternative dispute resolution. So it's not like they've learned anything new either. But this thing with, that's been going around the internet for a week. I told you last week it's a dead end. I don't not too interested. It's not interesting to me. I identified this uh, the child abuse, the child uh, pedophilia system back in 2000, and I attempted to do that documentary. I won't go through the story again. I got whacked a bit for that. So, like I said, I'm surprised that I'm still alive after looking at everybody who gets taken out. Uh, but I wasn't, you know, I was just on the fringe. It wasn't even close to getting anybody big. I, just, I was getting a system. I was exposing a system that most of you all think is uh, helping. But I understood to go look at it because I noticed what the child, rights of child doctrine was actually saying in the UN. In other words, I didn't just come at this from no good, from just an opinion that, oh, I see a conspiracy. No, there was supposed to be, there was an agenda afoot, and I had identified that. And then it pointed itself out in the court system of the United States of America, in a state. And it had a certain methodology, and it was all identifiable. And so this Jeffrey Epstein thing in the trafficking and the pedophilia, that part's not interesting to me. In fact, not a lot of it is. It, when I saw how they can cover up the thing, I've told you, you're not seeing many seats of decision that are finding 1,700 people get arrested, hardly any of any of them were, were anybody that of any official. That is a setup. That is protecting the system. They make you think that they're doing something and they're the ones that are the worst. So this F the Epstein issue is not interesting to me. Everybody, I think it's part of the Q psyop, the Q nonsense. Oh, we're going to expose them. I don't know anybody that actually believes there's going to be any justice in that part. And I'm really confused as to who was out there that thought that Epstein was going to make it to trial. That when he was deter he was dead, he apparently killed himself, committed suicide. I told you last week it wasn't worth, don't keep following it. It's going to be a dead end. This is not interesting. They've got it contained. Yes, exposing some stuff. Yes, it's making some record. Those are all political outings. 
He didn't even last a week. My first comment after I saw, and I'm, I so I want to find out. It's really more a comment, the tag I put out to see if I get an answer. Jeff Jeffrey Epstein's dead, supposedly hanged himself in, in a in a facility that was not. I guess a suicide watch means you watch the suicide because that's supposedly how he dies. He tries to hang himself. Now I don't know about you folks. I got some friends that are not here with us today because they were put in isolation on on uh, on suicide watch, and by the next morning they were dead. And this is in a local jail. So this is not even interesting to me. Who thought this guy was making it to trial is interesting to me. My t tag on the Twitter was, who won the pool? Who won the pool, folks? Who, in all this world of fallen nature and all the gambling that goes on, who won the pool? This guy wasn't making it to trial. There's got to be more than me that figured that out. This thing is not interesting. Now we get to go look at the crumbs on top of it. Oh, everyone's going to go. Who was involved? They did a data dump. Oh, yeah, go track all that down. Is there going to be justice? When you find out all the protection that's in the system for the, oh, yeah, you could go down the circumstantial route. Do you know the rules for circumstantial evidence? Do you know what it takes under circumstantial standards? And then are you aware you're handing that decision to someone who's in the system? Why then, when you think down the fact of that, even those basic points, would you consider putting so much more time into this? Because it's fascinating? It's just breads and circuses. When Hillary Clinton didn't get uh, charges, I'm not saying she's guilty. I'm saying she, when she we had no charges for doing what she did as Secretary of State in the server that was supposed to be supposedly national security interest that has no interest, apparently. And no one got the clue how this was going to roll out on that point, not relative to Epstein, but hers. You didn't recognize that there's no more time to spend there. And you spend time, these guys are getting around, and all the stuff that's going on around us is getting to us without any objection. Because while they're flying this story, Epstein Island, another episode of Epstein Island, I wonder how they're going to play it around. You think with all the islands that he's, is there, and then is he even dead? I mean, that's a lot of, I haven't said this at all. It's not that I didn't, it just, the joke for me was, who won the pool? Who thought this was going to trial? Whether he died or not. Whether they got it, released him out and he ran to Israel or not. Is the guy dead? This is like Khashoggi. As soon as they said the body was dissolved, you're done. There's nowhere to go unless you've got a ton of circumstantial evidence that someone would listen to. The story's over. Stop following it. Now, is it unimportant? Absolutely not. But you got to shift your focus to what is unimportant. What the people are doing that are in seats of decision to make it look like they're going to do justice. And you have to attack now the absolute injustice. Understand that the jail facility, again and over and again, I don't know if you folks have been paying attention. When you get involved in this stuff, lots of your friends are going to die. Lots of people you're going to hear that are in the system are going to die because they're mistreated and it was supposed to be underneath some sort of watch or isolation. This is the failure of the system that no one wants to look at. Are we going to look at that problem? The government failed again to bring justice a failure again. I don't even know what the point here is on the story. And yet there's so much story being made about this. The protocol, the prisoner check protocol follow, not followed last night. There's a whole kinds of story that's going to come out of this. Absolutely not. And when they are, if you've ever been in, you know the pro the protocol is. When they don't like you, they come every 20 seconds to beat on your door and keep you awake because it's all torture. And when they're not, they don't care about you, they leave you alone. And when they got a skullduggery going to happen, no one looks. And if they look, they don't talk. Why? Because you're under control of a military objective. Whomever's running the levers. And that's another story behind the scenes. Mossad the dog, folks. I mean, is this another question? I just want to know who won the pool. Who knew the date is what I want to know.
One joke at a time. We're talking Gary L. He wanted to bring up the fact that well, he may not have even died. Yeah, that's another joke. I can only tell one joke at a time on Twitter, I suppose. What is the interest in this guy? It's it shifted from the gawking about all that could be done. I think under maybe this Q and nonsense, oh, they're going to be exposed. Nothing's going to be exposed, actually. Oh, you're going to get names and connections, and yes, it's going to be dirty for them. It might even cause a few some trouble. But you're not going to get at stopping the underlying thing that continue that will continue that allows this to, thing to be global. If you look at this story, you're going to see everything that happens all the time to take out people that they don't want around. Then there's the question, in this case, was he actually taken out? I know one of my friends never came back. He never went back to his family. I know he hung. But you know what? He didn't have anything to hang himself with. So we're wondering, how did he get that thing and hang from where he was? Unless two thugs got into his room and hung him. Epstein, not so much. For all I know, I got three, uh, the picture I saw, I got three Mossad agents putting a, a, a ventilator on him, wheeling him out to go to the next Epstein Island that no one will ever know. But it was easier if they just take care of the problem, isn't it? He's done his job. Why is this a question? What is the system going underneath it that's being lost here that everyone's not focusing on is what I'm really focused on. But I'm not even focused on that because it becomes this continuation of crime against people. And the allowance of the crime against people. And the perpetrators to get out. I mean, I see, I look at the first story, the billionaire pedophile was found uh, in cardiac arrest shortly after 7 a.m. Found. Cardiac arrest. How many things have I heard are drugs that put you in cardiac arrest? And they aren't. I don't know, folks, but it's not interesting to me. Who thought he was going to go to trial, and then those that didn't, who won the pool on the day? I want to know who knew when he was going. Who won? See, they always make something out of it. Someone makes money out of it. So Epstein, we talked about Epstein last week. He's gone today. No, it's done. Now you're going to look at the record that was put out the day before he was taken out. And you get to go through the crumbs of that, all circumstantial connections, that will keep people talking and just focused on everything else. But if you are interested in the underlying victimization, you would be attacking that, not this fluff. And this is my problem with all these things I see that social media pr promotes this exquisitely. It's not that I'm not interested, because I'm certainly interested in all the time I put into understanding that the system looks good on the outside and it's a, it's a it, you know, polish this, uh, uh, this pile. That's, that's what we've allowed. And none of us will be actually focusing on the things that we can do. What do we, and then I guess this is my other thing. You find out, you could find out all the circumstantial evidence you want. You can even actually qualify what circumstantial proof would make in a court, notwithstanding the, how hard that would be. Are you going to be the one that presses that forward, or is this a bunch of more information you put in the bag, uh, the bag on your back, the, in your mind that you think you know? More trivia. I guess I'm sounding irritated, aren't I? I'm sounding uh, irritated to myself. I wasn't this irritated when I started thinking about how funny it was. I really want to know who won the pool. But the underlying problem with all this is the gawking and the crickets. No one will champion this condition, will put it together enough to do anything. So why put any time in that part? Well, that's a, I look up frumpy. That's right. It'll be interesting to see what arrests follow. It will be. But see, that's, the, that's politics now. They didn't care to protect the main guy that could have exposed it all. The guy that we already know was working with the FBI, that was working with the Mossad, that was working with big groups of influ influential groups behind the scenes, big money people. But that's, to me, going to be more of a political hit. And then for what? You put it back in the same system that's as corrupt as the, you see the first case? They'll steal from Iran, the people from Iran, a church no less? 
And we find out, luckily, there was three judges that wouldn't go with that kind of an abuse, that much of an abuse. I mean, you know, this whole thing is just a one nonsensical delay after another relative to what I'm viewing is something we need to, if, you, if you're on this and you're going to pull this thing along and do something with it, I'm behind you. But for all the gawking I see about it, this is like an accident we're all watching. We're just watching a rubbernecking on this whole thing. Now, I'm not. I mean, I just, I guess I'm amused by some of it. Like I said, I just, who won the pool, folks? Who won it? Who Who knew? Who knew to make the money on this? What bookies set this up? Someone made it somewhere, folks. I'm just not privy behind the shit of all this stuff in the world. I just know it goes on. So, the monkeys see monkey do. It's all a continuation. We're already diminished, you know, this in a way, this DNA, this... Uh, hybridization, chimera, chimera in China, or China, whatever the heck you want to say. Now that we've got our language so destroyed, I can't even know which direction the Ebonics is supposed to speak to. At any rate, we've got it reduced down to now, I told you, when we moved, had the idea we could ethically talk about the condition that we're going to meld the monkey with man, and they started, and they then they, I said it's over, and then they did it being scared, and now they're doing it. They're doing it without even an investigation. And I told you that the dragonfly told us the experiment said that they genetically, epigenetically changed the dragonfly to take on the AI. We see here, and as I think this was sent to me, well, no, it was another video that was sent to me uh, relative to this idea, that they're going to meld these things together in this adjustment that they're making, now openly telling us about it. Researchers say 6G will stream human brain caliber AI to wireless devices. Those new organisms will be wireless devices. No different than the dragonfly was a wireless device. But they're going to use 6G on the horizon. Remember, the G is not a speed. It, it's, a, it's a capacity. It's a thing. Uh, as 5G networks continue to expand uh, uh, in cities and countries across the globe, key researchers have already started to lay the foundation for 6G deployments roughly a decade from now. So they're also talking about going through your phones and all this other. It's the, the Internet of Things. It's the surveillance globe. This is not even a question now. They're making organisms that will be functioning like people in a diminished capacity that will be now screamed into so-called brain caliber AI. This is all fiction. This can't happen, folks, brain caliber. Again, this is all just the hype. I'm talking normal, this current technology. It just, it, the software is not written more than yes or no. And that has that yes or no is programmed by some monkey. In fact, I literally saw that some guy in a coal mine, looking at an ore cart, a coal ore cart, running past him on how to do something. He says, "We could teach a monkey to do this in two minutes." So watch out, you coal miners! They're going to have uh, these chimera, these chimera, not a kinda coming to take your job if they haven't taken your business because you don't understand. I was just looking at a video. You don't understand that IMSHA doesn't apply to independent coal mining operations and that are organized to not have any employees. And boy, if somebody could get that, that message out to, to Pennsylvania, it might help the last remaining independent miners back there uh, not be taken over by the federal government and, uh, and, and corporate mining. At any rate, so this, here's the Here's the one report. Researchers say 6G will stream human brain calibers. And before that, about a week, I've got an emailer that sent me acknowledgement that I'd said on the broadcast that the 5G networking, the nerves, the, is going to constitute a giant organism. And there is a video now of some gentleman, and I didn't go to the total interview, but uh, and thank you to the emailer, the, the 5G superorganism. Was a, you can put that in a video. You can go to YouTube. Right now, during the broadcast, I guess you want to listen to this, uh, that, instead of this. 
uh, is now acknowledged, folks, as someone is so-called expert who looks into it, uh, who now uh, identifies this in the same way. This superorganism in the 5G is going to become 6G brain caliber AI that's going to be directly addressing everybody except accessible by it. And I propose that it's going to be these epigenetically genetically changed people or chimera to receive this thing in one giant organism controlled by whom whoever the people behind the curtains are that you, all of you all are failing to out and, and eliminate. And I say that in the most peaceful way. But so it's been, again, someone else, some more, a better expert than the guy behind the woodshed is saying that 5G is going to become this super organism. He actually has some interesting insights uh, that he found is going on that we are further confirmation of what I've been telling you in a different way, but from the, the notice that we're given in the news, the so-called news. And, and you think that this technology is not here, and we are seeing the notice about how they epigenetically change us. And I, I see, you know, it's not, it's harder to, to kind of visualize this with the vaccines, but that's a, a seems to be a big one as well for people. The making of a of a new organism by DNA, that's going to be the next iteration that it's coming. But to show you that the it's not, we're not outside of technology already that scientists are already working on all this stuff. Whether they're not they're compartmentalized and don't understand this is where it's going, I don't know. I get to sit back and look at how you could pull it together, and it's just scary that it does pull together that way. But uh, scientists can now manipulate brain cells using a smartphone. So I've been telling you about your smartphones and your silent weapons for quiet wars. Yeah, who who won the pool, folks? For Epstein hit, not making it to trial. Who won the pool? Eh, here we are. You're going to be programmed by your own smartphone. Here it is. A team of scientists in Korea and the United States have invented a device that can control neural circuits using tiny brain implant controlled by a smartphone. Okay, so they still need the hardware implant. I get that. Do you think that's going to be a hard uh, thing to do once they are already tapping into your neurons by at a distance? I don't think so. This is just the start of telling you that they're doing it. They're willing to do it. They're going to try and do it. To, what to do? What Alzheimer's? Because here again, well, saving grace. That's why we're doing all this stuff. Is for Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and addiction, depression, and pain. How about if we just learn what causes it and we avoid that stuff? How about if we find out if Western medicine's not causing all this? If all this 5G technology is not causing this? How about if we start figuring out about that? How about if we start figuring out what causes depression? How about if we go, instead of taking guns, we find out why the kids are killing each other and wanting to kill other people? Why are they so angry? Why do they want to be, guys want to be girls and girls want to be guys? Why don't we find out about all that first? No, no, no. We're going to go ahead and, oh, it's not ethically scary because we're going to fix something anyway. Oh, Alzheimer's. Because Alzheimer's, folks. Scientists can now manipulate your brains. Now, you do need the implant, so don't fall off the deep end quite yet. But, folks, I can't see how it's not a right around the corner. They're already interfering with your neurons at a distance. This is just a, where they are probably doing it for particular purposes on a particular outcome because that's how they got their funding. It's fascinating technology. For people that, that it can help, I have no problems. But when you start looking at the overall of the notice being given us today, it's a scary future. And if a lot of you don't, all of you don't understand how to make a distance between this stuff and where you are, they're going to get you. Korea and the United States. I'm surprised we didn't see this out of Israel. That the Israelis are doing this. But who to who? What is it? One degree of difference between the United States and the Israelis to do this? And, and if you think I'm just focusing on something for no good reason, remember everything that's coming out of that little piece of cancer that affects the world globally and what they're into and what they're interested in. You get, there's another story if I get to it. They're, it's getting better. So scientists can now manipulate your brain. Do you think manipulation by the government of the United States has been uh, something they didn't do? Oh, horrors, the United States can't do that. French bread spiked with LSD in CIA experiment. In 1951, a quiet, picturesque village in South Southern France was suddenly and mysteriously struck down with mass insanity and hallucinations. At least five people died, dozens are interned in asylums, and hundreds afflicted. 
For decades, it was assumed that the local bread had been unwittingly poisoned with a psychedelic mold. Now, that was like the ergot fungus that happened that caused the witches to be killed. So people thought that was it. But now, an invest American investigative journalist, maybe far and few in between, as we move into this daring future of a monkey man, has uncovered evidence suggesting the SCIA peppered local food with a high, high hallucinogenic drug LSD as part of a mind control experiment at the height of the Cold War. This wasn't only limited, I'm getting off the story here now, it's, uh, it was in Point Saint Esprit in the Garde, Southeast France, that they did this. This was also done to soldiers. And so the United States government's not beyond doing whatever it thinks it wants to do or get away with or test if you thought it was wearing a white hat and it cared about you. And where it turned its attention inward, like we saw the one of the evidences last week with Southcom wanting to do surveillance in the Midwest and up to South Dakota, Southcom <laughs> to South Dakota, uh, you're, you're disregarding the history that's for portending the future that we as a society really are duty bound to step up to stop. I don't know what to say there. I hesitate to even say it, but I have to say it. We can't just talk about it. Like this Epstein thing is not going anywhere to stop this underlying cockistocracy that now controls lives that turns on itself. It's not really on itself because we've got people that think that they're separate and different. But if we needed if we needed any more evidence here, there's a and the proof was some communications that were done. That's where I didn't get to the proof, but just to talk about this, the United States government is willing to make you look insane or do insane things or endure hallucination. What do you think the 6G is going to do when your your bodies are susceptible to its radiation and whatever the technology is as the smart as they learn how to use smartphones to reprogram you? Do you think it's going to be just the smartphones? No, that's why they're putting these 5 and 5G towers so close, because it's, your phone's going to become irrelevant at some point as well. But we found out they use the smartphone to find where you are within a structure if they don't use the drone to come and seek you out. The new technology now, the drones now, military drones again, learning to seek out properties and get inside them and map them out. Like we said, like your Roomba's not good enough. So the government's willing to harm you. If we don't start taking that into seriousness and understand that it's protecting itself, this Epstein thing is one big protection thing, and it's not local to the jurisdiction of the United States. Israel is 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 right behind it. If you didn't understand it by looking at all the names who were involved, is this even a question? See, I don't get that. It's not even a question to me. It's just how far, how more bigger are we going to find it when we get to the end, what are we going to do about it? I don't I don't see people doing anything. I see people sitting... I don't even know what they're doing. They feel that knowing this stuff... This is just the gossip. I think we're told not to gossip as well. I wish I had the, all this stuff coming to mind. It doesn't come to me. We're not supposed to be looking at this in the gossip sense. Anyway. And it just, even though he's been convicted in another way and they did a deal and all, Epstein at one level was still innocent at one level, wasn't he? At least for these lo local causes. So from that standpoint, the government failed to do justice to him. And I'm just telling you that's indicative of what they do to anybody they want to get rid of. They create the condition. This is, again, it's not even interesting to me. Who won the pool? I don't know why. They're just I've been laughing as soon as I saw that, not laughing that he died, not laughing that he got killed, or whatever the heck he did, he got suicided, or suicide, doesn't matter to me. It happened. He wasn't going to go to trial. I had to laugh. I said, what does everyone think this is going to do? This is just breads and circuses, while the people who have been perpetrating this get away with continuing the crime into the future. Military-style surveillance technology being tested in American cities. So where, this is not police, folks. This is not what the first article Whitehead was talking about. It's not a police state. The military is doing this. 
until you raise up beyond police, which makes it sound like it's almost okay, into military occupation. I don't think people appreciate what we're looking at here. I don't think that you understand that then if when you get to the military and you see it's global, this oppression, how then we can bring in the nation so-called, the state so-called, the pipsqueak elephants in the room that have influence and action at a distance, that control the place. And that knowledge isn't good enough, because what is anyone going to do about it? Who is positioned in the place to do something about it? And anybody that's in position in the place to do something about it, even once caught, you see what they do to them. So this is a whole, we can go ahead and get enamored by the, by the story, the entertainment, or we can figure out that there's just going to be some things we can observe, but more importantly, we're going to have to put our attention on things we can do something about. And uh, every time I say that, my, my mind says there's a whole chorus of people that say, I'm not doing anything, or you can go do it, or nothing's going to matter, or nothing. And I, all I can tell you is that you're, you're delusional. As soon as you focus on something, make this, again, that wrong that you need to make right, it, it starts to change. And the more of us that are doing it, the more of us that are taking things that we can do, not the things we can't do, but focusing on the things that we can do, I, I, I see that we make changes ever so slowly, but we make them. And I think that's just the amount of people pushing the cart, if you will. Technology being tested in America. This is because the airspace over America falls into the same legal category as other public spaces, such as sidewalks, roads, parks, and beaches. And it isn't illegal to take photos of private property or private citizens from public space. As a result, we have no expectations of privacy from above. I found this story, and it's talking about this, is how the military has diminished your rights. This is through the Bar Association imposing this. And they took away, what they, when they went to the bundle of rights idea, they took away your, the law that existed in the grants that said that you had rights all the, way to, all the way to the sky or beyond and all the way to the center of the earth as a wedge. Now, there was a reason for that because they had to give a public access, if you will, to flying, which I guess I can see. But that is in transit. That's not in surveillance. And so the rule of law has been adulterated to in, invade your privacy through these legalisms that are not actually tested. And again, these are all just the opinions of people that do have a political bent. And if we didn't know that, we wouldn't worry about whether or not a justice of the Supreme Court or a judge was democratically commissioned or, Republic, or, or commissioned through a Republican-controlled government, Senate. That's what we do. And so that's a reality. So where the military is, text, is testing surveillance based on this, this uh, corruption, that it's a public space. In other words, we're all, you know, again, we're back to this enemy of the state. Uh, don't lose that. You're not presumed innocent anymore. That was another violation no one really stepped up to. This is what Whitehead speaks of, too. You're an enemy of the state. You're worse than that, folks. You're an enemy combatant, subject to indefinite detention now, underneath all this nonsense. This crime against you. I think that's a wholly more important thing than expecting that Epstein was going to make it to trial. And now looking for the crumbs that they threw out the day before in order to go look around for everybody else and make life miserable for those that you're never going to likely get uh, much out of anyway. And underneath that, the system, those that are not going to be found will continue. And if there's a, if there was a, a competition, like two gangs, you know, organized criminal syndicates going on, one of them has the upper hand at this point. Maybe you should look for both of them. But the United States government has a military that's going to use this public access as an ability to go past and spy upon you. And so you're given notice on how they're doing it, and uh, they're going to tell you, how you're not innocent from it. And no one's going to have an objection to this. And so you can read the story again. I could read all these stories, but what it, uh, guess, if you're just listening because it's interesting, I guess that's oh, fine, but it's not going to help anybody. So the military can see through a public space that they diminished your property rights. What What condition are you in when... You can allow someone in the seat of the decision that I can say overtook this place 
changes the law over time, which is arguably within international control parameters, and then allowed them to run a military in order to control you all. And you don't say anything. Is, is how they've been slowly taking us down. And, and who might that be? Well, another, another, someone else uh, jumps into the field as I talk to him about him, a little cancer, a little elephant in the room, that never really looks at this, notwithstanding Epstein is con surrounded by them. Israel launches, I would say the, Israel didn't do it, Israelis launch satellite to provide internet to the Middle East and Africa. Israel has successfully launched a satellite which will provide internet, TV, and mobile services to the Middle East and Africa. Can I go back to that other story? The military-style surveillance technology being tested in America that looks above in the public space to look down and, and look at you, to surveil you. Do you think Israel's doing this over the Middle East and Africa because of the benefits of the Internet, or are they going to be, as we hear, highly technically capable of sucking up all that information and data and surveil you? And if they're doing it, do you think there's no other country doing it? I mean, there's like I was saying in the internet, in the Twitter, there's no, there's no monopoly on organized crime. They want to blame Russia. There's no or crime or monopoly on organized crime. All governments do it, and in fact, non-governments do it. This thing called the Israelis, this political movement that is gaining power in the world as global as any other power. And, more, and as technically, technologically advanced, if you haven't learned the partnerships that are involved with what's going on, in, uh, in especially in the uh, military weapons, uh, electronic technology, surveillance, and satellites. As we heard or read, the Israelis tried to drop something on the moon. These people are just polluting the whole world. But why would... What is that? What, what kind of a mentality does that in the world? And yet that's what we are, is these monkey minds that we are. We're already really the chimera that they're making. And I guess that's the other thing, it's kind of a joke. And that we allow ourselves to do that proves it in a way. And we're better than that. So Israel, Israel launches a bunch of a satellite to provide internet. Oh, beneficial. How, what, oh, this, how loving their hearts. This is one massive surveillance thing uh, to advance the, what they're going to do, uh, and they're going to be doing like they do to you now uh, in, this, in this battle we have in the Internet to try and keep things private, and the government comes out and says it doesn't want encryption for a reason. It's just another power and force, a brutality that wants to keep track, and you're letting it. Now, so Israel's in the game again. They're going to do over Africa and the Middle East. It's a big surveillance uh, device, and uh, they're coming underneath the benefit of it. Alzheimer's, folks. In the same point, in the same week, uh, the Epstein uh, it swings uh, by his own hand or not. Trump pardoned Israeli drug smuggler on children's request. So I thought this was fascinating. Maybe some of you folks that are all in jail, if you listen to it in or know someone that is, maybe you need to have a send, uh, have your uh, your kids or your, your a lot of kids uh, write letters to the president and uh, and ask them for all, everybody that's in prison to be released because uh, your mom is sick or you have a problem. And this is actually a thing you can do. No, most people don't understand this. Uh, but Trump pardons Israeli drug smuggler on the children's request uh, that he come home. The guy was working with China to smuggle in drugs. Now, how that isn't an insult to his own children who are trying to save him, I don't know. But anyway, the point is that we, here we have a little bit of a special treatment on top of it all. And when they start protecting themselves or limit their liability, you have to look at that. It doesn't happen anywhere else, does it? And yet it's a guidance for us so we can do the same thing. And we could establish that there's a difference in the treatment, can't we? Which is always now the problem, isn't it? Because you start falling into the thing where you start handing it for someone over, handing it over for someone else to decide that. At any rate, at the same time that uh, I, Epstein swings, a, a drug a smuggler gets released for whatever reason. This is a again, I don't know many people that get this kind of treatment, all because the. Uh, 
that his wife was sick, has cancer, and the kid said so. You got to just take. I would just take all the things from this letter, and I would just put them in a letter and ask Trump to to uh, commute your sentence or whatever. Just, I mean, just do something for yourself. Why aren't, why aren't we doing that for ourselves? This is all there to do. I guess it was the other thing I noticed. This is what you get to do. It's a part of your defense. What I find fascinating is that one smuggler gets uh, put in jail and another one gets pardoned just because his kids are crying. Maybe he should have thought about all that. If this is important, if this is really important, why does that matter? He just insulted his kids as well, his little goats. He just insulted them by, by moving this drug in, didn't he? Why is the word Israeli even in the title? Why is that important? Would it make it even more outlandish if he did that? Maybe. It depends on how you look at all this. All I'm here to do is tell you that there's notice on what there is to do in the world. There's things on what are going on in the world. There's the anomalies that don't make any sense whatsoever to be going on in the world relative to each other. And those are telling us a bunch of things. If you put them in neutral place, it'll start guiding you on... Not that you know it's no good, but what might be able to be done to move you, remove you one little bit more from it. And before I go into another subject matter, I guess I'm, I'm going to be saying thank you for tuning in today. A little bit more time here, but again, this, uh, Epstein, the underlying problem is serious as a heart attack. It, it's going to kill us. But that's not being addressed in the surface fluff relative to an idea that I still I can't believe anybody thought he was make, gonna make it to a trial. He was either gonna be gone like he hurt, like we are told at least open um, the reporting is he's dead, or he would have been let let go to be released by some mechanism. That this even became a story is really a fascination to me. That it continues to be the story is the fascination. And that no one looks underneath this is really getting to how this thing continues, how it goes on, and that it is still going on. I can't believe he's the only one either. It's really a, a sadness to me. I don't. I just see the more, the more we accept the low-hanging fruit instead of going for the harder, harder message and work and exposure and accountability, which is not so obvious anymore. And that's how that's played as well. But anyway, thank you for tuning in today. I hope something I said will uh, give you some insight. Get it? Maybe refocus us on more important things that we can do something about. That's, well, I guess, the point. What are we going to do about Epstein? I don't know myself. So I can, I'm going to focus my energy someplace else. I'm going to look for information somewhere else. I'm going to try to uh, bolster my, my condition somewhere else. I'm going to protect myself locally from the people that would be more attacking me. I'll talk about this to other people locally, like I did when... Uh, before, in the 2000, 19, 1990s and so late 1990s, with women that were having their kids taken from uh, by social by adult service uh, uh, child services. I mean, this is all I was doing that then, trying to help those uh, that were being harmed of this very same thing that's just out in the open because of the type of people that are involved. It doesn't mean that the underlying harm is still there. But thank you for anybody who's been uh, reposting or con uh, syndicating the uh, live broadcast. Thank you for all y'all uh, do that. Jules, sound minds and all. Uh, and then those that repost and downloads and whatever and the spreading the word folks so that needs to get the word out to everybody I'll be with you next week nature and tech diffs willing that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, Journey with Purpose. Feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass.